welcome back at the Gamescom. I have a very special person here for you. This is David Fox. He's a game designer. He has been working for LucasArts and he's been doing the Timbleweed Park. Hello. Hi there. So, um, you're doing some educational content now, you're saying. You're doing it together with your wife? Well, I have been doing stuff with, with Annie for, for years, educational. Thimbleweed, I wouldn't say is educational. Um, so there's stuff that we do together, and there's stuff I do on my own, and stuff that she does on her own. Yeah. And so we'll kind of mix it up and and do both. Um, I, when I first started doing um, iOS work, um, we used one of her three of her books mm -hmm. as the source for the for those for those yeah. titles. They really weren't games; they're more like interactive books in a way. Um, but as far as games go, right after I did that, I did this Rube Goldberg game. Rube Goldberg was a yep. um, artist, a cartoonist mm -hmm. from the U.S. Uh, back in the 1930s and 40s. He was really popular. He was known for Rube Goldberg machines or chain reaction machines. Yep. And his cartoons, the ones I liked, from I remember when I was mm -hmm. a kid, were these chain reaction machines where you'd like, open a door and it pulls a string and it would knock a bucket off of a thing and get a cat, a cat wet would jump and knock a dog or something. So we took a bunch of, his, we got the license from his family and did a, an educational app called RubeWorks, uh, which is available in like, most languages, you know, the, the, the main languages that games come out in. And uh, it was, um, it's still being sold, it's just so good. Yep. And schools are using that to help teach uh, simple machines and physics mm -hmm. and also in preparation for when their, their students mm -hmm. build their own physical Rube Goldberg machines. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's fun. Um, I'm probably more interested going forward in story type games. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Thimbleweed Park was a blast to work on. Um, also in virtual reality and location-based entertainment and how to bring more narrative experiences into that as opposed to you know shooting experiences i'm not that interested in ah. shooting games ah shooting games talking of shooting games what do you <laughs> what do you think about wildlands and video games um well, I don't believe that violence, in, like in the, I mean, the controversy is from the stuff in the United States where some people are blaming video games on shooters, you know, shooting and so I, I think that's totally misguided. Um, the, the best statistic I saw was um, examples like, say, the United Kingdom, the, the, the number of of people, the number of computers, the number of people playing games, and the number of, of gun deaths. Um, it had nothing to do with you know, all the numbers matched up in the same proportions until you got to the gun deaths. So people in other countries play as many violent video games as we do in the United States. Um, we just don't, they just don't have access to millions and millions of guns. Um, so in, un, unfettered access in, in a lot of places. I mean, in California where I'm from, there are gun laws that, that restrict a lot, bunch of types, but because it's not consistent, people can bring guns in from neighboring states, and it's very easy to get guns at gun shows. And um, I would like to see laws passed that start restricting doing checks, background checks, and licensing guns, and put, creating safety guns where you they're uh, uh, biologically connected. Now, what's the word? Biometrically connected to the person. So if a kid picks up my gun, if I had a gun, they couldn't fire it. Um, it'd be locked for them. So all those things would help, but it's, I think it's a crazy cultural, out of control cultural thing, which I would like to see changed. Yeah. So the basic problem are the weapons itself and not the games using weapons. Yes, for sure. What do you think should politics do for developers, for the gaming industry, and what should they avoid to do? What should politics do, or what should the games do for politics? Or 
<laughs> Which way are you thinking? No, I'm thinking of the way what the politic is doing to help young developers creating games. Or if they're trying to restrict what a developer is allowed to do in a game. This kind of discussion. I don't think there should be restrictions. Um, I feel like if there are restrictions, it should be more like what we have now, which are um, establishing ratings mm -hmm. so you know what kind of game it is. Um, I wouldn't want my grand, my five-year-old grandkid, yeah. my grandson, to play a game that was developed for adults, for example. Okay. Um, even if it wasn't violent, and there's just content there which is inappropriate for him. So for, for parents to be able to look at the rating system on a game and know yeah, this is appropriate or it's not appropriate for, for this, this kid. And then, you know, I think parents can, can choose what they want. I mean, when, when our kids are growing up, you know, we did not allow our son to have toy guns either. I mean, we just felt that it was unnecessary, inappropriate. Sure, when he went to his friend's house, he'd probably play with their toy guns, yeah. but we just didn't want to support it in the house. Um, and he turned out, he turned out good. Yeah. No, he was okay. He wasn't damaged by not having access to toy guns. <laughs> so it's more important to make the people able to do intelligent decisions and not about banning all the video games. For sure. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, I feel like that's a ridiculous non-starter that is coming out of um, Trumpism and that whole, you know, if I can get political because I'm so, so left-wing compared to that stuff. Um, yeah. You can get as political as you want as we're also very political here, so... I'll probably get some hate mail for this, but that's okay. <laughs> So what do you think? Was developing a game easier in the past, do you think, some decades ago? Or is it now the more freedom? Uh, that's a tough question. There, there are there are things that made it harder and make it easier. You know, working to, to do a smaller game from before mm -hmm. is probably easy, easier than doing a AAA game now. There was no such thing as AAA games when I was working at Lucasfilm. Mm -hmm. um, teams tended to be relatively small. Um, the tech itself, um, capacity of floppy disks, yeah. restricted how big the game could really be. Mm -hmm. um, as the tech and the storage capacity started increasing, we started filling them up with more and more content. Yeah. Prices went up, teams got bigger, games got more expensive. I love that there's such a thriving indie um, indie industry, indie development industry, yeah. where you really don't have these large games, you have small teams and mm -hmm. some really brilliantly designed and created games. Um, on, on the technical experience, doing a game now compared to doing it, say, 30 years ago, is much less barrier to actually getting the code done and, and with the tools are a lot better. Um, I could make a change and compile it immediately in a second before it would take 10 or 15 minutes to get it from the computer I was doing the work on it into the target computer. Yeah. Um, so that whole thing is great. It means there's more time for the actual development of us waiting for, you know, for serial data to go across to a Commodore 64 or something. Um, but what's changed is that people's expectations probably continue to increase, so they're looking for flashier and more complex and more involved games, which then become a lot more difficult to produce because they're bigger. Um, so from that point of view, yeah, they're, they're going to be harder than small game from before. If you're talking about a more of a casual game, then you know, that's a different, a different area. I'm thinking about the game creation industry. Do you think this is a part of the market that has been neglected? It should be valued more because all politicians are talking about the great industries or the car, mobile, everything, but not about gaming. But it's a growing market, isn't it? A, it yeah, I, I don't know the stats, but the last thing I heard, I think the, the gaming industry is significantly larger than the film industry in terms of, of annual ticket sales or, or purchases or across all the medium. So, yeah, for, but 
I think a big big budget Hollywood blockbuster film gets more attention than most games and part of it might be because you know, I, I, I still think games most games are targeting a male audience yeah. um, there aren't enough games that are either broad based of interest or you know specifically for girls and women um, and I don't mean shopping games I mean you know real you know real games that are as compelling as as the best movies that are out there I'd love to see more of that um, and more games that are um, you know, I don't want to say family oriented but more broad broad based there there is a there is a place in Los Angeles called uh, it's a virtual reality center called um, Dreamscape Immersive and it's backed by, I believe Steven Spielberg was one of the people behind it and a few other people from, from more from the film industry and they ended up decide, they did, when I was there in March they had three experiences that about 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes each none of them were shooters, they are all non-violent, they were all more story based and very inclusive and very fun and it was like being inside of a, a movie that was interactive yeah. and I would love to see more like that. Um, and my wife, who's not a, a gamer, had a blast, and she she loved it, and she loved the story and the writing and the and the production values. And I'm hoping that more people will move away from the easy adrenaline rush of a of a shooter and more into you know thinking games or games that are more they have more of a story base instead. Wanted intelligent games. Um, talking about uh, something special here in Germany, you see we have the X Fighter. This is really nice. But if you're going to another boot, you will see we have the normal real army here, and it's a really great discussion about if the normal army should be allowed to advertise in a gaming convention where young children are looking and they're building a connection between the gaming and the real violence. One person once said, "You cannot respawn in the reality." That's all. And they do not want to have this real violence intr yeah, intrude into the gaming community. So, so I'm wondering if, if that was um, kind of you know, taking advantage of the fact that a lot of people here are, are into shooters and stuff and, and they're trying to match the audience and, you know, and say here's where you can go if you, once you yeah. get really good at, at killing, fake, you know, killing virtual people. Yeah. Um, well, I I did not serve in the in the armed forces um, when I when I was younger. Um, I was either a combination of um, you know, college um, or other deferments. Um, I would not have been a very good match for that. Um, the first game I did for Lucasfilm didn't even have any fire button on it until until George Lucas said it really needs a fire button for the he was right for that game but um, so I'm, I tend to be pretty non-violent and, and kind of a ex hippie um, mentality so yeah I, I, I don't know I, I would prefer that we keep fantasy as fantasy and, and not not have the other part come into it but I would like to see the mix change too and have more more games that are really really compelling that don't need um, shooting or fighting or killing or all that that's very nice thank you and is there any game you're personally really liking to play some game that you think this is something that inspired me something that I really like to play yeah, with, with a, uh, I'm thinking of recent games. Um, I, I recently got a virtual reality system. I have a huge backlog of, of games I haven't played yet that I'm feeling guilty about. Um, but the one, one of the ones I liked a lot was called Moss. And it's beautifully done. Um, it's a relatively small team that did it. And... Um, you're basically controlling this small mouse through this gorgeous, lush environment. And it's essentially it's an adventure story game, um, different than the kind that I would do, but you know, it's really nice. And it, it just, um, you 
feel very transported, and it's it, you know I think they did a brilliant job with that. So I, I would recommend people at least check out the videos of it if they don't have VR yet and see what that looks like. Thank you very much for the interview, and I hope you have a nice and great time at the Gamescom. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you very much too. Come on, bye bye. <laughs>